Hi, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Stevens, for having us both. Um, I know we all know who the man sitting next to me is, but just a brief refresher. Um, Jonah is the founder and chief executive officer of Skin Better Science, as well as the chief strategic officer of L'Oreal. L'Oreal announced their acquisition of Skin Better in September of, of 2022, and Skin Better is the fastest growing brand in the professional skincare channel. Prior to Skin Better Science, Jonah was the founder, chairman, and CEO of Metasys, the largest independent dermatology company in the United States. Metasys was acquired by Bausch in 2011. Jonah is also active in two causes he cares very much about, Max in Motion and the campaign for tobacco-free kids. On a personal note, Jonah has also been a fantastic mentor to me during my entire career, and I am 12 years old. So Jonah, you've now built and sold two companies. What similarities exist between the two companies that help make them both so valuable? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, so first of all, thank you for staying here and listening to this. I had a sense of panic five minutes ago when the room was empty, and I knew that my Nielsen ratings would be going down <laughs> significantly. So thanks for, uh, thanks for being here. And of course, to the organizers, thanks for inviting us. So I think that in many ways, um, Metasys and Skin Better and now L'Oreal have a lot of commonality, more together than, than different. Um, the main idea has been to develop, of course, great technologies, but to do it with people inside the company that are really committed to their own and our corporate success, and most importantly, to be focused on the needs of customers, of physicians, of their patients. So I think that the DNA of both companies um, was actually and remains very similar. Uh, people have said to me, gosh, you know, Skin Better wasn't around that long and, you know, there was this big acquisition by the leading beauty company in the world. And I don't see it that way at all. I really see this as a continuum uh, of the same discipline, the same values that have continued since the day Metasys was started. You know, we, we know a lot more now and we've made so many mistakes along the way and hopefully learn from those mistakes. Uh, but the people uh, remain the constant, having awesome people to work with that are genuinely committed to our shared values is probably the single biggest determinant of success. Skin Better's philosophy has been to focus on HCPs as your primary sales channel. Now that you're part of a company that is heavily DTC focused, how you reconcile those two things? Yeah, another thoughtful question. Uh, so, Skin Better Science uh, is totally, has been and remains totally committed to healthcare providers. Uh, every transaction that Skin Better has with customers, whether it's in the office or through portals that are established by physicians, uh, is intermediated by physicians. So they're receiving revenue literally from every sale and that will continue to be the case uh, under L'Oreal and otherwise. So that's a core principle. On the other hand, uh, there's no question that L'Oreal is the leading beauty company in the world, has tremendous resources and experience to reach consumers and to talk about the products of the company, whether they're in hair care or skin care or luxury goods. So we would certainly expect to be able to take advantage of that platform, which is really best in class, and to make more consumers aware of the opportunities to improve their skin and to improve their self-image by using Skin Better products. Uh, the channels remain the same, but certainly the message and the audience for the message would expect to be much broader. The other important facet that, that we have now at L'Oreal is an extraordinary international footprint. So Skin Better Science, although it had limited and small distribution arrangements in a few countries, was really a North American business, just as Metasys was. And now, uh, under the L'Oreal uh, family of brands, we have the ability to go into China, uh, which is the single largest market of L'Oreal, uh, into Europe and to many other theaters where we expect to be able to offer patients the same extraordinary products that we've been able to in the United States. What do you think the role of technology is and will be in the future of aesthetics? Well, innovation, uh, to me, is a better word than technology, uh, with no disrespect to your question. Uh, so innovation takes many forms. It could be an insight into consumer activation and information, and that's clearly critical to informing consumers about opportunities in the market. 
Uh, it could be a technological advancement in a device uh, that is offering a new procedure to patients, or it could be innovation in skin care, uh, whether uh, invasive, mildly invasive, or non-invasive. But at the end of the day, that's the coin of the realm. Uh, I used to describe it otherwise, but there's no question that, that innovation um, is what drives this market. And as powerful a company as we are at L'Oreal, with incredible consumer outreach more than any other company in the world, um, I, there's still no sense that you can offer consumers anything other than the best products because brand names and brand values are eroded if you disappoint customers with their experience. So uh, technology or uh, innovation remains the critical element of this business. And you know, at L'Oreal, we uh, we're spending a fortune on innovation just as we did at Skin Better. And I think those companies that spend money thoughtfully and with clear direction and intention will continue to lead the industry. This isn't luck, it's really commitment uh, to innovation, it's thoughtful execution, it's understanding the regulatory framework in many uh, international markets and the United States. So it's not a game for the faint of heart, but still there is a total dependence on things getting better. It wouldn't be a conversation with you if you weren't giving me feedback, so. Um, how has the aesthetics industry evolved in ways that you expected and ways that are different? Well, we were uh, at Metasys, I think, one of the, the pioneers in the aesthetics industry along with Allergan. And, you know, certainly one has to recognize Allergan's historical contributions uh, with, uh, with Botox in particular um, and, and ours in the filler category at Metasys. Um, so we've gone from what was in essence a functional duopoly uh, with two highly competitive companies, but you know, with similar values, I think restraint uh, in some ways, uh, to a market now that has um, dozens of players in fillers, uh, in neurotoxins, and certainly more coming. And the question is whether the competitive field will be based on innovation or whether it will be based on what one of our industry colleagues calls democratization, which really is another way of saying price. Uh, so uh, the, the question now is whether with so many manufacturers there can continue to be price maintenance for physicians in particular and for med spas and other places that offer these services or whether with so many providers that in some cases become desperate to sell their products, uh, there'll be enough um, sensitivity around pricing that prices go down, which you know arguably is a good thing for consumers, but is certainly going to change the profit dynamics of this industry. And what advice would you give people that are just starting businesses of their own? To think twice. Uh, and then after they've thought twice and understand the commitment that it's going to take, the disappointments along the way, um, to really understand that failure is not an option. Uh, the commitment has to be intense, it has to be whole, uh, with one's whole self, and to understand the sacrifices that are involved in forming and running a successful business. Um, it's, a, it's a big job, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of disappointment, people will disappoint you, and some will surprise you in a really positive way. And, you know, I, I'm not uh, in a position to lecture anyone about work-life balance, which is a really important theme at L'Oreal, but in a startup company, there often isn't the luxury of providing that balance uh, because the commitment needs to be so intense and so, so uh, encompassing uh, that something usually gives in uh, someone's life, whether it's personal relationships or time with kids, like something, something gives. There's no perfect way to do this. Um, unless you have all the money in the world and can hire the very best people in the world to do your work for you. And what are you most excited about in your new role at L'Oreal beside the work-life balance? <laughs> um, I, I'm excited, first of all, I've never worked for a big company. So there, there is a perverse challenge in this for me uh, to see if I can be successful in a highly organized, multinational organization where, you know, there are, there are a lot of levels and uh, there's a lot of um, contemplation before decisions are taken. Um, certainly at Metasys and at Skin Better, uh, we moved very rapidly. Uh, we made decisions, probably uh, many of them were misguided because they were unstudied. 
uh, but we were able to move fairly quickly, and it was deliberative, but with a small number of people. Uh, at L'Oreal, as with any large organization, whether it's Allergan or Galderma or any of the major companies in this industry, uh, there is a lot more to lose, in a sense. And uh, there are worldwide dynamics that have to be considered. So I personally take it as a challenge, and I've been asked by the chief executive to try to move the system faster. There's a very strong commitment to open innovation, and I've been asked to, to help a lot with that and to be open to technologies and innovation from other quarters that historically have not found their way to L'Oreal. So I kind of, you know, just looking at this personally, can I do well in a big organization uh, with, you know, a lot of different uh, tentacular relationships? I think I can. It's only six months, but I'm optimistic. And the, the more interesting question is whether I can contribute to L'Oreal being more open to external innovation, to be able to make decisions uh, much more rapidly than has been the case historically for the company. And I know that the commitment from the most senior levels of the company is there because they've asked me to do it, and we've put huge resources behind reorganizing the company in a way that really emphasizes open innovation uh, to the same degree that the research and innovation function occurs within the company. So I'm challenged, but also optimistic, and it's a, it's a new kind of gig for me, so I'm kind of excited about that. And then last question, um, philanthropy has always been a big part of your career. Why have you prioritized that as a business leader? Well, I think philanthropy takes two different dimensions. So first, from a corporate standpoint, uh, we have always been focused on social impact, whether it was at Medicis or Skin Better and now at L'Oreal. Uh, so there is a responsibility, I believe, and I think my colleagues at L'Oreal believe, to lead and to understand that consumers trust us uh, with their money, uh, with their appearance, with you know, making choices that deprive them of other opportunities, and that we as a company have a responsibility to be a leader and to be socially innovative. We're not a non-governmental organization, but by the same token, uh, we're able to take positions and invest money in things that are important to our consumers. So I think the progressive feature of every company I've been associated with is really important. And frankly, Skin Better wasn't for sale. We were approached very aggressively by L'Oreal, and particularly after the last experience, which I won't uh, speak of in depth, which we were not so thrilled about in terms of the outcome of the company and the company that acquired us. Uh, it was really important for us to see a total value alignment with, with, uh, <laughs> with L'Oreal as opposed to uh, a prior acquirer where there was fake alignment. And uh, we spent a lot of time making sure that the sort of progressive or philanthropic interests that we had would be supported and actually amplified. So um, our social impact work, instead of taking place now within Skin Better, whether it's the Dream Initiative or other things that we do to create health equity, uh, to create acceptance, uh, are continuing, but on a much grander and international scale at L'Oreal. So uh, it's true that I have a lot of personal interest in philanthropy. Some of it is because of life experiences uh, that you know, have been very personal and inform me of things that I think are important to do. Uh, we've never used company resources to support those things because I think there needs to be a differentiation between what a company stands for and what, it, what executives stand for. And a lot of companies um, sort of interpose the two, which I think is, is not fair to shareholders necessarily. So uh, there's always been a clear point of differentiation, but one is not more important than the other. And is there anything we didn't touch on? I don't know, how to, much time do we have? I, I, think we, I think we have about five minutes. We do, huh? Yeah. Um, you know, what might be interesting, although it's very uh, atypical, I sense, for this conference, but does anyone have a question that they'd like to ask? Or something? It's been self-explanatory, I guess. Um, no, I mean, I don't think it's our job to eat the clock. So uh, we're, yeah. we're happy to turn back what seems to be a, a somewhat uh, delayed schedule. Uh, but I, I think I'd uh, just leave with a sense of gratitude, uh, of course, to the organizers, but more to the industry and to physicians and customers that have helped us, that is, I and my colleagues, to be so successful over the years. 
Uh, we think we've invested in the right way, both with our hearts and our money, and it has had a great outcome. And I think we're really excited because the whole team is on board now with L'Oreal. Every, every employee has maintained their position or taken a different position in some cases of, of even greater importance. And I think we all have a sense of, of gratitude and appreciation for being able to be in this position and to be able to continue our work. Awesome. So with that, thank, thank you. you.